Jennifer Trask from jennifer-trask.com, creator of Mindset and Marketing Mastery. And I'm here today with Tanya Whittle from TW Fitness. Welcome, Tanya. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and I'm so excited to have Tanya here today because she is here to tell you her story of success. I love hearing success stories because uh, for me personally, it helps me uh, stay in the boat moving forward. It gets me excited to know there's other people walking the path. And also, if you're a coach, you're really going to love this because Tanya's a fitness coach and she's going to talk a lot about how she moved her practice from a lot of chaos to building a really solid foundation and really creating the business that she's always really wanted. So, Absolutely. ready? I am. Okay. Well. All right. <laughs> So, Tanya, let's tell everyone, you've been in business for almost five years now, right? and tell me, why did you get into business for yourself, and then kind of where your business was when we met, because we met a little right. over a year ago, right. and then where your business is today. Okay. Um, well, I guess you could say that I'm in business closer to seven years, Okay. Uh, because it was just a hobby. First. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I started when I lived in Nunavut. I was, you know, got into the fitness lifestyle and I just realized, you know, that, I mean, there's a big story about it, which you can find on most of my blogs and stuff. Right. Like that, how it actually kind of came She's a great with. blogger. We'll put that in the, in the notes. <laughs> so it, it made a big difference, you know, in my life, fitness and, and getting healthy and, you know, it really changed my life. And, um, I decided to do my personal training designation just for myself. Okay. Like I wanted more information to train me better, things like that. And as part of that, I had to coach people to complete my certification. So I kind of realized that this was a natural fit for me. Right. And I decided to do a part-time, and I worked at a volunteer gym, and I you know, was really into it. I mean, I could leave my, my corporate job and go to the gym at 5 p.m. and not leave there until 3 a.m. if I didn't want to. I mean, I was hooked. It was like, this is where I belong. Right. So we moved back to Newfoundland in 2008, and... It was kind of the plan was maybe I'll start my fitness business, but then I got scared uh, because we have a mortgage and we have all those things and you have to be an adult now and yes, you know, right. all that stuff. in the real world. Right? <laughs> and the bank doesn't care if you're happy or you can't pay a mortgage. <laughs> That's so, true. So yeah. I, I took a job, um, another corporate job, and after about six months, I was like, okay, this isn't working. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I moved. I decided to start my business a week after I did that. Um, I got a, a corporate job offer that I couldn't turn down, yeah. didn't turn down, Okay. Um, and went into that role and, you know, the same thing, six or seven months in, I was like, I should never have done this. Right. Uh, this wasn't the right fit for me. I have a passion for something else. And the biggest thing was I need to see if I can make this work. Right. Like if there's ever a time in my life where I'm going to try this, now is yeah. it. And I felt like now is the time. So my husband and I, you know, had a conversation around it and we just decided that, you know what, give it a shot. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and you can go back to work for somebody else. And so we thought, great. what do I have to lose? Right. Um, you know, but working in the corporate world, I was like, you know, what's the saying? Uh, square peg in a round hole. Right. And yeah. I just, I got along very well socially with everybody. Yes. But it just wasn't the right fit for my life. Right. And what I really wanted and what I was really passionate about was helping women especially. You know, I mean, I coach men too, but um, the bulk of my clientele are women, and I really want them to understand and overcome the things that are holding them back because it's never really about not liking exercise and not wanting to eat healthy. Yes. There's always a lot of underlying issues. And so for me, you know, getting it and then now being able to coach people, that's where my true passion is. And so that's the long story about how I started <laughs> that my wasn't business. wasn't that long, really. I kind of fell into <laughs> it. I didn't know I was supposed right. to do this. I never really knew what I was good at. Right. I always kind of thought everybody else seems to have talents, but I don't know if I had a talent. Right. Um, oh, wow. And so this was kind of the one place where I always felt like I belonged was right. in the gym. And, you know, you know, outside, like even not directly in the gym or in a studio, but essentially helping other people overcome, you know, what society says we should look like. Right. You know, body image issues, self-confidence issues. And so what I really do, I think, is give women back their lives, give them back the power over themselves and give them back the freedom to just be themselves yeah. and, and love their life again yes. without, you know, the stigmas that are attached. So right. um, where I was, uh, I guess it was almost a year and a half ago now. Oh, wow. Know, it has. It has. It has. Um, I know. <laughs> oh, my God. So where I was a year and a half ago, I mean... It's honestly so much has happened in a year and a half that there's not enough pages 
on the internet to explain it. <laughs> Tommy likes so, to tell stories, but give, um, us, all right, give the, us the good short version. The, 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 cliff, the Cole's Notes the version Cole's notes. is, I mean, I was, I was, I had done a lot of mindset coaching and, and I knew that there was something really off, mm -hmm. but I couldn't really pinpoint it. And you and I had met through, uh, you know, a mastermind group and, and I knew we clicked right away and um, I hadn't considered coaching. Like, it's really funny because yeah. I coach people and right. I use fitness coaches myself, right. right? but I had never considered business coaching right. and I really didn't know a lot about business. I mean, I was good at what I did, but I really was bad at business right? and I was making a lot of wrong decisions, probably based from the right place, right. you know, based on, you know, but I wasn't able to make clear decisions. I hadn't done any real groundwork in where my business should be or where I wanted it to be. Right. So I think a year and a half ago, my business was controlling me. Right. My business owned me. It did. You were working 120 hour weeks. 120 hour weeks. I was yeah. running two studios. I was driving from you know Holyrood to St. John's sometimes three times a day. I had staff. I mean, it was just like I can almost get a little anxiety just thinking about where I was a year and a half ago. I was so unhappy, and I remember thinking every day like this isn't what I wanted. Right. This is not what I wanted when I went out to start my business. I'm not changing anybody's lives. Right. I'm I'm making myself miserable as well as a lot of people around me. Right. So where my business is today is, you know, my business works for me. Yes. And I oh, am. Oh, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> so, it, <laughs> that just deserves so, a clap. It, it, it really does. It's a very big difference. So tell everyone the, the kind of the differences that have happened. Um, oh, my God. Again, there's not enough pages on the Internet. Um, but, you know, I set client dates because I was finding that it was really hard to run the business and train with clients. Right. You know, I was all over the place in that, but I, you know, set my schedule and said, this is, this is the days I'm going to train clients. And I really stuck to it. And it was really, I was really scared about it at first because I was afraid, what if they don't, you know, continue or what if I don't get clients on those days? And right. a lot of tests came up for me, you know, sure. to see people I really wanted to train who didn't fit into that. Um, but, you know, I stuck to my schedule because we laid it out. But, you know, I did the groundwork. I, I identified who my target market is which was the biggest thing that I had never even considered. Who's my target market? I don't know. Who right. wants to train? Who wants to train? <laughs> you know? And then I realized that, you know, in being yeah. fair to, to the client as well, is that if I'm not going to be a right fit for them, right. it's not fair to take their money no. and not be able to give them what they need. So now I'm very clear. I don't take every client. Right. I'm very selective in my list, not necessarily because I'm not the right fit for them, but depending on what they're looking for or where sure. they are in their journey, they may not be ready for what I'm going to do with them. Right. Um, and so I really, I have a really good consultation process now uh, that really helps myself and them identify yes. whether or not they're ready. Right. And I think a lot of people really respect that because it's not just come in and sign on the dotted line and, and hand over a check. Yes. You know, or here's your, here's, you know, take my visa. Yes. It's, it's much more about are we going to be the right fit for each other? Because we're going to work together a lot. And yes. if I'm not going to be the right fit for them or they're not the right fit for me. Yeah. Uh, so that's probably one of the biggest changes in my business is that right. I no longer just say I train whoever wants to be trained. Yeah. Um, you know, I set my client days. I'm very focused on the business side of things. I've learned how to mark. I've learned how to use a computer, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to use the internet. Like, before, I mean, I think the story of my life was like, what is wrong with this computer? Oh, right. <laughs> There's a person behind it. I mean, I was really afraid of technology, of, of messing up or not sure what to put out. I've really learned how to use social media. Um, you know, I've taken lots of courses and I've really delved into the business side of things. So where I was a year and a half ago to where I am today, like, I give my friends in business, you know, and, and what I would say, you know, in very loose terms, competitors, because I know that we're not actually yes. competitors, yes. but I've made a lot of friends, really good friends in the fitness industry as well, who, you know, we share business advice together sure. and I feel in a great place to actually sit down and pass on business advice to people right. because of all the things that I've learned, you know, through the coaching and through the work that we did together. So, you know, I mean, my business is a complete 360. It doesn't look anything like it used to a year and a half ago. And are you happy? I am happier than I've ever been. Yeah, ever. Because that's the end goal. <laughs> I'm happier than I've ever been. You know, I have time now. My own training goes better because when I was playing 120 hour weeks, I found that I was resentful of the time I had to spend in the gym on my own health and fitness, which right. is why I got started. I mean, it's extremely important to me. Right. And I found that was suffering. My food was suffering. Um, you know, my mental health was suffering because of the fact that I was so stressed out all the time. My personal and business relationships were suffering. You know, my relationship with my clients was suffering. Yeah. And now I feel, you know, I can do things that I really enjoy doing. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, you know, for the first time in business, 
I can say, you know, now I can see the benefits of being self-employed, of being wow. able to do the things that I want to do sometimes, of wow. having the flexibility to run my own schedule and manage my own life that way. And I have time to go to lunches and go to coffee and go see friends. You know, so I, so <clears> the <throat> business side of things, once I was able to clean up a lot of that stuff, it gave me my life back. Right. Because I didn't have a life for a few years with growing the business the wrong way and not knowing what I was doing. Right. You know, I only, my only regret is that, where were you five years ago? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't doing that then. No, I, was doing I know, other things. I know. And I wouldn't know. I wasn't ready to see it That's then right, right? Because I think that even if had someone told me to do all this, I probably would have had to go learn everything the hard way like I like or, to do. Right. Um, yeah. But I don't know, know anything about that. Okay. <laughs> so, so let me ask you now, um, I know for you, mindset was a really important yes. piece of getting you to where you are today. So can you tell everybody uh, just a couple of the most important nuggets that really were the game changers for you that set, set you on that course? Oh, God, there's so much has happened again, you know, since I started doing mindset coaching um, and things like that. I didn't realize uh, back then that I was the chokehold in my business. Oh. Right? That's a powerful one. So, <laughs> so I, I realized, problem. I realized, especially, you know, after, after making the decision to close one of my studios, yep. um, you know, I tried for a really long time to make it work because I didn't want to fail. Right. So I had to uncover my fear of failing there and telling people that I don't want to do this. This isn't what I want. Right. I made a mistake. I jumped in too quick. I didn't do my due diligence. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to tell everybody that. And I didn't want to tell everybody that I was going to lose a pile of money. Right. You know? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> I didn't wants that. that. was understanding that I was the problem. Right. Wow. Yes. That's powerful. It was. It was huge. So when I walked away from the studio, I knew I knew in my heart that this will never work because I'm the problem. Right. And I can't make it work because at the end of the day, I don't want it. Big. And big. so when I knew that, I knew I have to get out. Yeah. Because I can run this right into the ground entirely and not be recoverable from it. Right. Or, you know, I mean, rise from the ashes, so yes. to speak. But, <laughs> you know, so I made an, um, I made a decision to, to, you know, to end that portion of the business. Yeah. And then that allowed me to come back and go back to the drawing board. Um, the other, like, there's always so many aspects to mindset coaching. So I had a big fear of failure, which I needed to overcome. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, knowing that I was the chokehold in the business. Like they yeah. say, where is your chokehold? I was the chokehold. Right. My fear of failure was really holding the business back. Right. And as they say, you know, I have this business, the one in my house and the one, you know, online coaching and that side of the business. But the wheels weren't fixed on that yet. Right. That wasn't ready yet yeah. when I decided to jump into a second one. So now I had, you know, three or four different aspects of business that all had problems. <clears throat> so prior to looking at any future growth expansion – or things like that. I mean, you need to come back and fix yeah. the base level of it. So, yes. you know, by doing all the, the work that we did on target market, ideal client, vision, you know, where is the company, all of that stuff, where do you want the company to be? Yes. What do you want your life to look like? Yeah, that's Because, you know, I could, I could have kept my company going the way it was at 120 hours a week, but sure. at what cost to me? That's right. And that's my life, cost. and my personal life. So yeah. I was no longer willing to do that um, because I wanted to have a life. I want to enjoy my life. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, so the other, you know, really big side of it too is that I think in the corporate world, as well as most of my life, I was always taught business and pleasure don't mix. Oh. And that's so crazy. I know. Wait, what? How so, so fun is this? I know. So, <laughs> I'm like, it's I'm highly wrong. pleasurable. <laughs> I know. So I was like, so there was always that. And then, you know, especially in the corporate world, it's like drop your baggage at the door when you walk in. Right. And so I always felt this you know, what is wrong with me as my right. primary question? Why can't I get over things really fast? Why can't right. I move past this? Why do I let all these things bother me? Right. And at the end of the day, there is no separation between business and personal life. No. Because the chokeholds that are going on in your personal life, your, your belief systems, your fear of failures, you know, your limiting beliefs and all of those things are what's actually holding you back in business. Yes. So you need to bring your personal you life in order to, to, to look at it and actually see what is it yeah. that is going on? Right. Because until you deal with all of those issues, yeah. you're never going to be able to progress forward. So that was a big thing that I realized as well is that, you know, whether it's dealing with staff 
or, you know, project people that, you know, joint ventures or yep. people like that is that you need to be able to lay it all out on the line. Right. And it's not about bringing your baggage from home with you. It's about looking at your, um, what is holding you back and whether it's, whether you have employees or not, um, you know, they're not going to be able to do it either. Right. You know, we have to, we have to be more open-minded about what's really going on with people that we're choosing to work with or what's really going on with us. And, and so the mindset side of things really allowed me to see into my subconscious mind, what are my self-limiting beliefs, you know, and, and actually work through those to then be able to overcome them and then push myself and the business into new directions. Right. And so how, how did being in a coaching program, because Tanya and I have been working together for over a year now, and how did being in a coaching program, uh, I guess, help move along that process? Oh, well, you know, <laughs> I'm nothing if I'm not an accelerated type A, <laughs> overachieving, gotta do it all, whatever. She told me to do this homework, I better get it done. Um, so, but, you know, I, all jokes aside, I mean, when you have absolutely no accountability, yeah, then you don't know what you're doing. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. Right. I look back now and I think, oh my Lord, you know, like, <laughs> how did I survive as long as I did? I must have been really good in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Which I am. But Which you are. <laughs> Which you are. But, Great coach. you know, on the business side of things, like how did I not actually go bankrupt or how right. did I actually manage? And, you know, it was only my willingness and my drive yes, and, and my fear of failure yes. that actually, you know, in some ways really propelled me forward. Sure. But it was at the same time holding me back. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at like, you know, the coaching that we did together, I had things that I had to accomplish. You know, we set goals. We, we talked about all the things and there were plenty of days, you know, that we didn't even touch business yeah. because I can't get past whatever this is that's going on. Yeah. And so we, we had to do some coaching around that stuff, which was fantastic to be able to do, yeah. you know, like to get rid of some of the mindset issues that I had going on, mm -hmm. preventing me from moving forward. But, you know, the program was laid out, I mean, in, in what, how many steps? 12 steps? 10. 10? 10, 10, 10 steps. steps. So I did 12 on me. <laughs> <laughs> we added an extra by the time time came. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so the accountability was the biggest part is, you know, and the conversations around it and the education around marketing and, you know, how the world actually works and what's the importance of, you know, social media and learning things. So like I said, I gave up my fear of technology and I right. gave up my fear of the internet and putting things out there and letting people see, you know, you helped me let people in. Right. To let people see that I'm a real person too, that I'm not just a fitness person, you know, who does all this stuff perfectly. Like this is my life. Right. You know, I mean, I have a lot of the same struggles that other people do yeah. and, and to overcome those. Um, but you know, from the program, the set point was like, you know, steps one to 10, we were able to get it done. And then I, you know, my marketing plan was created from that, my marketing calendar so that I was able to really stay accountable. Right. And there are lots of times that, you know, you and I will still, you'll say, where are we with this? I'm like, I haven't even done that. <laughs> but, you know, but, but in, in <laughs> what? I don't There's know, never that, a dull that. moment when you're in this place for yourself. What, what are you talking about? That must be a lost <laughs> in email. I haven't seen that. But um, it's the it's definitely the accountability because left to my own devices, mm -hmm. I and you know I mean my, our contract ended and then I was like can I do this by myself and then I was like I'm not ready yeah like I, I still need that accountability and I don't think that I'll ever really be wanting to be doing it by myself because I am in business alone yes. I have I have a virtual assistant who yes. is more of a leader manager in my business allowing yes. me to be the artist in the business yes um and that works really well but she doesn't do what you do for me right. in that regard of keeping me accountable, looking at the bigger picture. Yes. You know, what's our one year plan? What's our three year plan? What's our five year plan? Now let's throw all that in the garbage and start over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and let's do it all again and then throw that in the garbage and start over too because I change my mind so often. Uh, but you know, it's it's going through that process and actually having someone to sound ideas off of and do things and have a look at them with you as that extra set of eyes, it's that yes. trust in your business trust. that somebody else wants you to be as successful as you want to be. Yeah. And Absolutely. knowing that they're helping you make the right choices. Right. And with my type of personality, yeah. you know, I, I'm an insanely creative. Yes. And I can go, I can lay all my plans out and then something exciting happens while I might be out hiking. Yeah. And then I come home and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do all this. And then you're like, wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> and, and so, is this in the plan? Does it make sense? Is it right. And do we need to change the plan to account for this? Is That's this right. a massive idea where we really need to move this in? Absolutely. Or can we move this back? You right. know, and just what we talked about um, just last week was, right. you know, I want to do this. 
I don't want to do it now, but now's not the time. We wait till after Christmas. Right. So it's actually, you know, before I flew on the seat of my pants. Yes. And Age now, one, one. now I actually put those plans in place. And I think without a coach, I would still be doing that and I'd still be living in chaos. I would still, you know, the business would be in chaos. It would possibly have failed by now. I would have given up. I don't know if I would have actually given up, but I would have been, I, I'd still be in chaos. And right. now I feel like I, I actually know what I'm doing in oh. business. Um, I have a lot more confidence in what I'm doing in business and as a coach. Right. And it made me a better coach because now I have my business things taken, you know, taken <laughs> yes. care of. Yeah. And then when I go in with clients or I go into the studio with people or online or things like that, whatever it is that I'm doing, speaking engagements or different things that I'm doing, I'm actually focused on them in those moments when I need to be. That's amazing. And I don't have as many distractions or worries or frustrations and, mm. you know, financially, yeah. you know, my business has come a long way because in the past I always just said I want enough. Right. Well, what's enough? What's enough? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I didn't even know what enough was. <laughs> right. Like, what is enough? Like, you know, <laughs> what do I actually need to pay? Right. Every month. And what do I want to earn? And what do I need to earn? Right. You know, and then what do I actually want to earn? Right. Because what kind of right. lifestyle do I want to have? Sure. And I never answered those questions because I always felt, I always felt a little bit bad wanting stuff. Right. Right. So we, you know, we had to work on some of those things. Absolutely. About, That's what You know, feeling good. bad about wanting money. Yes. Or to earn enough to, to do whatever I want in life. Right. And now I no longer feel that way. You know, right. <laughs> I'm okay with making money. Good. That's a, that's so, a big one. I'm actually glad you brought it up because a lot of people feel guilty making a lot of money. Yes. Like, it's a very mm -hmm. big problem, actually. Especially in the service industry. When yes. you're in an industry where you're helping people. Yes. You know? And I mean, um, but at the end of the day, what I do and the amount of work and the value that I put in for my clients. Yeah. You know, and the, and the same as what you do with your business, with the amount of value that you take out of it and what is achievable in your life after you do one of those coaching programs, whether it's with you or me or, you know, yeah, a, a business absolutely. coach or, you know, a financial person, yep. whatever it is that you actually go out there to achieve when you get a coach, they're going to keep you accountable and the value is normally 20, 30, 40, 50. I mean, it's, it's limitless. It's limitless. And yeah. so what you actually gain from whatever it is that, that you're spending on a coaching program. Right. Um, is infinite. And so I know a lot of people watching this are thinking about coming into the Mindset Market right. Mastery program. They might even be thinking about coaching. They might be thinking about taking on, there's some one-on-one -on -one opportunities right. within that program. So what would you tell someone if they're thinking about coming into the program? Um, what advice would you give them about choosing what's best for them and what they could probably expect? Because I know you know the outline of the program. Um, do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> The best, to her. <laughs> the best piece of advice, really, that I could give anyone. You know, I've talked to some new entrepreneurs lately, you know, and they're like, I can't afford a coach or anything. I'm like, find it. Find the money. Take it out. I don't care how you get it. Get a coach. Because you will make 20 times what you spend on a coaching program in a very short amount of time. It's going to take five years, maybe 10 years off your learning curve. Like I said, you know, if I knew what I knew you know, five years ago, yeah. I look, you know, and, and everything is a learning experience Absolutely. and you are where you're meant to be and, you know, all of that stuff. So I have no regrets about any of the lessons that I've learned. Um, but you know, the goal is to learn from them. Sure. And, and if you don't hire a coach who can actually help you, yeah. then you'll never learn those lessons that you need to learn. Right. And you're just trudging around and, and why trudge around when you can have the accountability that, you know, someone like you can, can give to someone. Um, so if you're thinking about a coaching program with Jennifer, definitely do it. It's changed my life completely. Um, but <laughs> the, the group coaching, I'll be completely honest. I, you know, I'm really excited about the group coaching that I'm going to take with you yeah. as well. Um, <clears throat> but I'm a little bit more selfish. Oh, right. I'm, I am a more selfish person when I go to a fitness coach. Mm -hmm. You know, despite the fact that I actually teach classes myself, you know, small, semi, you know, six to eight people. Um, whenever I hire a fitness coach or any coach, yeah. I want the dedicated time for myself because I want to talk about what's going on with me yeah. and my business directly. So for me, I'm glad that I'm, I'm going to be doing both. I'm still yes. keeping you as my private coach as well as, you know, the group coaching, which I'm really excited about having both because yes. it's always nice to be on everybody else's transformation as well because you learn so much learn from other people. so much from other people. You really so do. Much. So I'm excited about the group and yeah. the group can provide that. Yeah. But I would highly suggest for anybody, if you're doing the group, to at least get a few sessions. I, I, I know the outline briefly, but yes. not the full extent. But if someone can get a few private sessions with you because it's really important individually to talk about 
your own stuff and especially the chokeholds in your business. Where are they? What are they? Yes. You know, how can I overcome them? What are my limiting beliefs around all of this stuff? And actually do the work directly with Jennifer on your own stuff that's in your own business. But the group coaching is going to be phenomenal because like any transformation style stuff that we do or mindset coaching or, you know, anything that you do, you learn a massive amount from what other people are willing to step up and put it on the line. Oh my God. So big. So it's big. Huge. And of course too, we have live Q and A calls every week. So yes. people will get that opportunity right. to chat directly. Right. Um, if they, if the budget doesn't allow right. for well, if, I mean, that's know, it. If, if the budget absolutely doesn't allow mm -hmm. for it, then definitely sign up for just the group coaching. Um, because you'll meet a lot of people as well. You'll become connected in the network. So there you'll have a support system. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is, which is extremely important. My network, which is something that I, you know, didn't say as a year and a half ago where my network was to where it is now blows my mind when I look around at the landscape of the business people that I'm now associated with, because I was able to look at myself limiting beliefs overcome those, look at, you know, my own mindset in business, and then everything was able to shift. I'm able to put myself in front of people that I wouldn't have had the guts to put myself in front of right. a year and a half ago. Wow. And so, you know, for people, like, your network will change. You'll have a big support system through, you know, through you. I've made friends with almost all of your clients. Yep. <laughs> as well as now with friends. Right, you know, like right, right. Their houses. Sure. <laughs> and, you know, so, and you have so much in common with people. And when you can get real... And you can lay it on, on, the, on the line in a place of no judgment. We're not here to, to look at it like that. We're not telling you what all the things that you did wrong. I mean, you'll laugh about all your mistakes one day. I mean, a year and a half ago, I, I wanted to cry and hide under a rock about most of my mistakes. Now, I'm yeah. much more willing to kind of go, oh, my God. Yeah. I can't even believe I survived. <laughs> so, so in terms of that, like, everybody needs a coach. Yep. Everybody. Don't think that you're different. Don't think that you're special. You know, I mean... You know, really, I know what I know. The best sports people in the world still have coaches. coaches yeah. Tiger Woods has a coach. Kobe Bryant still has a coach. Yeah. You know, business people. Beyonce has three business managers. Oh wow. You know, I mean, they I have didn't coaches. Know that. <laughs> Oprah. Oprah has coaches. Yeah. I mean, they have coaches for a reason, and the number one reason is accountability. Accountability. And you know, then there's also the education and the learning and the mindset and getting over things. But accountability for, for everybody is massive because. We're gonna do. We're gonna look at something that we might want to do, and then we get a little bit scared, and we go, "Oh, I can't do that." Yeah. And then we we back off of things that we really want to do. Mm. And when you have the coach, yes. you can walk through all the steps that need to be done. You know, okay, this is step one, two, three, and everything is laid out. So when you're ready to launch, you're ready to launch. I'm ready to launch. And you feel good. You can't wait to press that, you know, open cart button. Yes. Or you can't wait to, you know, post that out there on Facebook or big exciting news coming tomorrow yeah. because you're ready for it. Yes. That's In right. the past, I was doing programs you know, maybe starting on October 20th, that's two days away. I'm not, I don't even have anything ready for it. Right. Now, everything that I'm launching in a month is pretty much done. Right. And now it's just making sure that everything goes smoothly. Yes. And so, you know, the, the amount of freedom that comes from that is huge. It's not, huge. you can't put a price tag on that. No. There's, it's impossible to put a price tag on it. Wow. That's big. I know. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for, for sharing so your story with everybody. <laughs> And thank you for being here. So I hope it was helpful. And um, oh my God, this this interview was supposed to be 15 minutes. I know. And we're half an hour in. Because um, that's how I roll. <laughs> but, but you know what, though? What's funny is uh, a lot, because uh, of course in my head I had an idea of what this would be, but it has right. actually been a thousand times better. So, <laughs> and I actually uh, feel like there's a lot of great insights. I mean, I, I need to go back. I got to get this transcribed to get those notes because <laughs> there are some really important pieces that I think people can learn from, yes. even just to take it and start to apply into their business. But Absolutely. it sounds like the biggest, one of the biggest things too was the accountability and the clarity to yes. make good decisions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Big. The self-confidence that now comes from knowing more about business, knowing about my business. Right. What is in, what is happening in my business. I know every aspect of my business. Right. And knowing that, the clarity that comes from that, and the confidence that then comes from it. Yeah. Is, is I mean, you can't even describe it. Yeah. You know, it's the freedom that, 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 that you get from that. Wow. So. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to give you a hug. I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for being here. And if you have any questions, you can email me. Tanya's information is going to be, um, it's going to show up there and it'll be in the show notes. So awesome. if you want an online, she's an online coach as well. So it doesn't matter where you live. You can hire Tanya too. That's she's right. She's an excellent fitness coach. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.